Today is the 13th of February and I thought I'd start on a lovely bright note because the sun is shining bright. Yesterday was a miserable day with a lot of cloud and drizzle and damp. So how the British weather changes? By now those of you who follow my YouTube videos will know that the British weather is the most unpredictable thing. So what am I going to do today? I have one of my YouTube fans who did a workshop with me last year and we styled his white pine. I will refer you to the old pine. And he's brought it in the middle of February, which is the ideal time for repotting his pine. I want to show you certain aspects of this pine because there are certain things which I need to uh, pass on to you, which many people don't realize about. So here is David from a previous video. And he's brought this white pine, which we restyled. You remember, we took the top off and we made it like a semi-cascade. So we're going to put it in semi-cascade pot. What I really wanted to show you is that this pine was rather sick. So what uh, David did uh, was to put it in sphagnum moss. And my famous sphagnum moss trick has really rejuvenated the tree. Look at that wonderful mycelium in there. Many people do not understand mycelium. I still get people who bring their pines to me and point out that they've got a fungus or some insects in the soil which is white and they don't know what it is. For those of you who are new to the YouTube videos, this is something that I really want to pass on to you. So this white stuff is not a disease. It is just a fungal growth. We call it my mycelium or mycorrhiza. I don't know how I spell mycorrhiza. It's quite a difficult word to spell. But just believe me, it is what we call a beneficial fungus. So I'm going to reduce this root ball, this moss. I'm going to save the moss because moss is quite hard to get. Look at, look at that beautiful white mycelium everywhere. It's really multiplied. But what I wanted to show you is that you mustn't waste this. Don't throw it away. When you pot other pines, you should take some of this because like mushroom spores, because it's a fungal growth, you can mix it with other soil and the mycelium will spread and multiply. So this is what you need to do. So I'm going to tease the root ball out and we'll repot this tree. I will show you aspects of it as I go along. So here we are teasing away and again wherever you look there's masses of mycelium and the original soil is quite a nice gritty soil so the pine seems to have uh, done well. The roots are not absolutely pot down in fact because we put it in a moss basket the roots have spread out so Let's see how much we'll take off. We've got to take enough of the root ball off to fit this semi-cascade pot. The shape of the original pot is still here. Can you see? That's the shape of the original pot. So it was just placed in a basket of moss and that is the original root ball, the rectangular shape. And the history of this tree is that it was probably bought about more than 35 years ago when we first started Heron's Bonsai. So this tree was purchased more than 30 years ago in a blue pot, I'm reminded. And it has grown ever since that time. So I'm sure there are many of these trees still knocking around. Uh, people who bought them 30 or more years ago. And there you are, look at the massive roots, very good condition. So. We'll continue doing the report. Take another shot, you can see that root ball. Look at it, all this black soil. The compost is a bit old, but it seems to be okay. A lot of people are obsessed with the compost that it should always be new, it should always be like this and that. But when you think that trees in nature, they just grow in ordinary mud. I know that in a smaller scale you need very well draining soil but you see look at the beautiful roots on this tree I'm going to try and keep as much of this root as possible I don't just cut the root for the sake of cutting root a lot of people believe in cutting so much off but as long as the roots fit the pot I'll only take the extremities of the roots off 
so you can see how much I have taken off and I think we are down to must be about not even 25% of the original root ball when you think that that tree was growing in that basket which is so big and now we've got it down to this so all that lovely sphagnum moss has done the trick rejuvenated the tree made it healthy and now once we've done that we will put it probably back in the same sort of soil with just a little more akadama mixed in it and i'll continue to use some of this sphagnum moss mixed in the root ball so it's really important to get air into the roots as long as the soil is not compacted or compacted then the tree will perform well so let's continue and i will take bits of video from time to is the amount of root we have managed to tease look at all that look at all that and i'm going to i would say safely cut some of these off like that i think there is sufficient root in there so we've got rid of that much root and we've reduced the root balls but all the roots are healthy so there's no fear of the tree suffering so I tried to get this tree into this pot, but because the surface roots are so nice, I think it would get lost in this pot. So just for the sake of a pot, you see this is slightly bigger. This may be a better fit. So it's always better to err on the side of caution. So it may be a bit oversized for now, but at least I can get it into here without having to sacrifice some of that surface root. So I'm going to prepare this pot and get it into here, like so. So you can see how much root we've cut off, so the root ball is nice and compact. So there we go. All right. So I've got it in this pot at this angle, so there's good surface root there. And I'm just ramming the soil in. It's amazing how much soil goes into the crevices. I've used a mixture of our own soil and some of the old soil. So you can see our own heron's compost is 30% Akadama, 30% that volcanic grit, and 30% of fine bark and a bit of loam mixed in it. Different people have different formula that they use. Use the one that you are used to and works for you. Even to this day, we are always doing experiments with different types of soil and we like to try the different types of soil because different types of soil perform differently so unless you try it you never know what works so at the moment this seems to be a very good compost for the uk climate there's no universal compost a lot of people say oh you've got to use this compost and they use it whichever part of the world they live in not so Okay, so that is the position of the tree. I'll try to get the trunk as central as possible. I couldn't push it more because there's a very proud root there. And because it's a semi-cascade style, you can still alter the position of the branches to give it the shape you want. So this wire was only put on last year. So it can continue to be put on this tree or left on the tree for another year. So that's the cascading bit. There's a bit of gin there. So we need to build that crown and create the pad. So we've got this semi-cascade look. So there you go. The pot is a bit oversized, but I didn't want to stress the tree in a small pot because the surface roots would not fit this spot. So I had to go for just a slightly larger pot, only just about an inch bigger, but it made all the difference. There you go. 